It's, it's made out of duralumin, which air, an aerospace composite that had never been used in a PC before. I mean, it's a really great story for a PC, but it has no touch screen. So how would Windows work with this? You just page up or page down to move through your tiles. You can click on one of the new applications like that same Twitter deck. I can go back to my desktop with the Windows key. I can click here. I can even come and do the snap kind of functionality. By doing that. Yeah. And so, some side side. Side. so all of the same functionality that you saw in a touch-only system all works great with a keyboard and a mouse. The same thing is true for this system, for example. This is an HP DD6, which is using AMD's new A-series Fusion processor. They, they call it um, Lano. This system is also doesn't have a, um, a touch screen, but it has a great wide screen, so you can go back and you can run modern applications on it. In fact, that the Lano processor that, that's coming out this quarter is an integrated CPU and GPU that's running DX11, and it has more compute capability, actually more than four times the compute capability of today's quad core AMD CPU. So you can see, even on great PCs that are shipping today, you have a Windows experience with Windows 8. Now here's a PC that doesn't have a widescreen. This is the Asus EP121 uh, tablet that we showed at CES. And it has a good screen and a nice digitizer, but since it's not a widescreen, if I were to go and launch a couple applications and then run them side by side, there wouldn't be enough room to drop them side by side, so Windows knows and just launches them full screen. So this way you can still use tailored apps, and it, even though you don't have a widescreen PC either. So here's another example of Windows adapting. Here's Windows adapting to an existing PC by Sony. This is a beauty Sony bio, it's a Model L, but it doesn't have capacitive blocks at all. It has an optic space digitizer around the frame, but Windows can still work with it. So here I'm, I'm using the Windows experience either with touch, or I can use the keyboard. I can even run a, a tailored app, for example. And so you can see this is a, a touch-based tailored application that's, that's running here. So what you saw is not only Windows reimagined for tablets, you saw Windows being able to run on this entire family of PCs that are out there today. Hundreds of millions of PCs, with or without touch screens, with or without keyboards or mice, is the full Windows experience. Now, the other thing to note is that's not different versions of Windows. If there's just one Windows, Windows runs everywhere on these PCs, and that's just talking about today's ecosystem. The newest addition to the Windows ecosystem is, of course, ARM. So now I'd like to take a moment to show you some of the updates on that we've been doing with ARM partners. As Tammy mentioned, when I was at CES, I showed you the first step in our development of Windows running on ARM. I showed you motherboards, and we were getting Windows kernel up and running on Qualcomm, NVIDIA, and TI chips, which is a very important first step. Well, I'm happy to say that we've made a lot of progress since then, and now we have these developer reference systems that are all up and running. These aren't the systems that you're going to buy. These are, these are systems that are built for hardware and software developers. So they have you know, lots of extra ports, and they've got debug ports where hardware developers can figure out what's going on with different elements of the system. Uh, but what they do represent are integrated working PCs where more parts of the Windows system has been, have been brought up and running. And this is made possible in part because of the innovation that's going on in the ARM ecosystem today. ARM SOCs in general Virtually all of the new ones support Windows system requirements. They all run it over a gigahertz. They all have hardware accelerated graphics. Um, and actually some of them, I'll, to show you an extreme example of this integration, I've got this um, Qualcomm MSM 8660. This is a single CPU GPU combination that actually also has a 3G, 4G modem built into this package. So I'm looking down to see if you can see it. The, the entire system fits on, if the system we got any smaller, the logo would even fit on this chip. That's how small these things are getting. They're getting more powerful, they're getting more efficient, the cost is coming down, and they're enabling thinner and lighter form factors than ever. In fact, all of these PCs that I'm showing you here are not only capable of running the full Windows experience you just saw, they're also capable of a new mode called Always On, Always Connected. So the way you would expect from a smartphone today, these systems will be able to instantly wake, They'll be able to go on standby for a really long time with low power drain, get great battery life, but still stay safe and connected all at the same time. So take this model, for example. This is about 13 millimeters 
in thickness. It's an 11.6 inch screen. Um, it's running the same Snapdragon process I showed you at 1.2 gigahertz, and it's pretty responsive. I can touch, it has a hardware home button, so you can see how quickly it can switch between the start screen and the desktop. But we've done other hardware work, for example, on uh, USB. So the work we've done with USB on ARM is going to enable out a lot of peripherals that you already have today to just work. So I plugged in the USB stick, it recognized that same paraglider video, and you can see that it's instantly up and running. And this video is playing quickly. It's an H.264 high definition video, but because we're using Microsoft Media Foundation, it offloads the video playback, audio, and transcoding to dedicated hardware so that the CPU can stay cool and the system can stay really responsive. I'll show you another example of some hardware support. All of these devices have a variety of sensors in them. So in this case, I've got a 720p camera. <laughs> Uh, this camera is just one of the examples of the sensors that we're getting working at the hardware level. Uh, there are other sensors in this video, sound, location, movement, orientation, proximity. All of the sensor access is part of the new development platform. So developers using HTML and JavaScript will actually be able to write apps and take advantage of the sensor hardware. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Here's a system from TI. TI worked with Quanta to produce this system. It's a 12.6 millimeter thin. It's running a 4430 OMAP processor, which is a dual core, one gigahertz processor. It also has great performance, showing you the same video, instantly starting, playing, doesn't drop frames. It's, it's, a, it's really um, a good system. They're known for their DSP technology. They're known for great video playback. And in this case, I'm going to show just a simple USB working here, too. In this case, I'm going to go to my desktop, and I'm going to copy some files off the USB stick. And this is an important message. You don't have to give up the ability to have control over your PC just because it's ARM or just because it's a great tablet. So I just drag and drop and copy a couple, let's see if I can declare it away, um, files to my desktop from the USB stick. It works just like you would expect. Now, here are another couple examples. These are from our partners at NVIDIA. And in this case, I have a clamshell design that, have, that doesn't have a uh, touch screen at all. And what I want to show you here is that ARM isn't just for tablets. ARM enables ultra-portable computers of any form factor. So in this case, I maybe want to have all the battery life and the power efficiency of ARM, but in a more productive form factor like a notebook. So it's really up to you what the next generation of PCs look like. You can build them in virtually any size and shape, all with the same experience, all being able to run new apps, all being able to run to have control of the Windows desktop. This system is running the new Kal-El quad-core processor from NVIDIA, the first quad-core uh, ARM CPU out there. So you can see it printed, of course, as you would expect it. It's a uh, real word running on ARM. Uh, and, and it's one example of a different kind of form factor. So we can think broader, we can think about convertibles, we can think about notebooks. Uh, the same Calo processor is running in this system. This is one of the favorites with our software developers back in Redmond. This is called the Cardu system, and it's running the same quad core Calo. And w when I play the video on this one, one of the things that you'll see is uh, next to it, I have open the task manager. And you might notice all four cores start, but none of the cores peg. None of the cores pegged when launching and decoding high definition video. And in fact, the usage of those cores drops down quickly because again, we're using Microsoft Media Foundation to offload the, the hard work of decoding high definition graphics. And so that's really an important uh, element here. The same kind of offloading is at work with Internet Explorer. So I'll launch um, Internet Explorer, and this is one of the IE test drive sites. So this is hardware accelerated HTML5. Um, running on ARM. And this is really going to be an important part of the overall system because HTML, hardware accelerated HTML is at the basis of the Windows 8 developer platform. So if I go to launch one of those modern applications like Piano, this is actually based on HTML5. And you saw this app playing actually over here. One of the things to realize is these are the same app. This is running on x86. This one, I actually have a little microphone here so you can hear it, is running on ARM. It's the same app, completely cross-platform, based on the new Windows 8 application developer model. So I, that's, just, that's just at the beginning. We're not done yet. What you've seen today 
is just Windows running on all of these um, systems, from tablets to notebooks and all-in-ones to clamshells and other designs and apps that are running cross-platform. But one of the things we have to think about is the way we work together as partners. So for Windows 8 systems to be the best ever, we're taking a new approach to how we work with our partners in the ecosystem. We have committed to closer engineering relationships with OEMs and our silicon partners for these new systems. So we're going to start earlier in development. There is still a lot of room for this program to expand as we continue to develop. And we're not sure how we're taking it to market. But from day one, we started engineering these systems with a much closer degree of hardware software integration than ever. And that integration starts with manufacturing and continues all the way through final system configuration. I have a few areas uh, to talk about briefly of how we're collaborating with the industry.